What I got for you today is a professional match of StarCraft 2. It's going to be a Zerg vs Protoss on the smallest map in the current map pool. Spawning in the southeastern part of Paladino Terminal, playing with the red Zerg pieces, he is known as Team Liquid's Snoot. And his opponent, spawning on the other end of the map, playing with the yellow Protoss pieces, he is known as Team Liquid's Mana. And indeed, both of these players are going to be teammates. Now, maybe they don't discuss StarCraft 2 every single day, right? But at the very least, they will have a good understanding of each other's approaches. Just because they're teammates, right? I can't imagine that at the very least, they will talk about StarCraft 2 at the very least. Even if it's not on a daily basis. And generally speaking, those kind of games make for some great, uh, for some great, great StarCraft 2. Just because usually, um, they're gonna be playing some sort of mind game, right? For example... <sighs> Ooh, actually, that was a little bit sloppy right there. I think Stu is going to be able to get the expansion up. Could have been blocked there for a second. Regardless, though, uh, generally speaking, right, there's going to be some sort of mind game going on. For example, maybe Snoot here knows that Mana doesn't like going for early game aggression in Zerg vs. Protoss, and maybe he can get away with way more workers than you're usually able to in the matchup just because he knows that he doesn't need to create any Zerg links defensively. And, of course, there's really just one example of what could potentially be going on. Generally speaking, though, there's going to be more happening in the game than we can just simply see just because both players have got a very good understanding of the approach of their opponent. Regardless though, Snoot going for that quick hatchery here on the low ground. He's following it up here with three drones in a gas geyser and then also a spawning pool. So he's lining up brilliantly here for the metabolic boost. Meanwhile, on the other end of the map, we do already see that Nexus go down after the gateway. The pylon is actually part of the wall here. As you can see, um, Snoot will be able to figure that out very shortly. Always a little bit risky, but the wall on this map is a little funky. You basically have two entrances into your natural, and either you wall those off separately, or you go for one greedy wall right here, I guess, at the front, which seems to be what most of the Protoss players are currently opting for. But of course, having a pylon on the wall also immediately means that it's quite susceptible to bailing busts. Then again, Snoot generally speaking going to be the player uh, that will really not be focusing on that all too much generally speaking he's gonna be the guy that will be playing the macro game usually he will try and sit back make as many workers as he possibly can after which he starts building up a significant force and that's really the kind of play style that i prefer watching as well whenever i do see zerk players play now, Mana has got a very strong Zerg vs Protoss. I've been really impressed with his EVP as of late. Uh, he's very good at the matchups. He's been going for a lot of, like, Archon drops, but this map usually uh, a little less common for that. Usually that seems to be a bit more common, I guess, on the larger maps. And indeed, we do see that Stargate opener here from Liquid Mana going for that quick Stargate here. May very well be going for an Oracle. Regardless, though, his, uh, his Zerg vs Protoss win rate has been very solid as of late. He's going to be able to start getting a lot of probes here right from the get-go. He's already got a Stalker out here as well. A little bit risky because it looks like he's going to try and move across the map here to potentially snipe any kind of Overlords. It turns out that the Overlord that was up here has already left. A little interesting decision there by Snoot. I guess he found a, a better position for this Overlord here to potentially start scouting the back here of the main of the Protoss. Regardless, of course, Snoot is establishing himself that early game economy. He's got the third base already up and going. He's actually uh, finishing it up in roughly about a half minute or so from now. And on top of that, he's starting up his Roach Warren right now too at the three and a half minute mark. Very, very early Roach Warren in that regard, not really taking any risks. Of course, at the point or at this point in time, he really doesn't know a whole lot. The Overlord got shoot back, so he doesn't know about the Oracle that is indeed in production right now. Trying to get the Zerklings to go past this single Adept, but the Adept will be able to hold the line just fine, although the Stalker will be needed and a Apparently the probe will be forced there to create a few additional pylons. I don't think the Zerklings are going to be able to achieve a whole lot there whatsoever. Question is, is there going to be static defense here in time? I'm not seeing any spore crawlers just yet. Usually the latest you want to start these up is indeed going to be at the 4 minute mark. But at this point, the Oracle will already be flying across the map. And while there is a single spore in production right now, I wouldn't be surprised if Snoot takes at least a little bit of damage. Apparently he did now sniff out as well that the Oracle is on the way, but he's still going to be in a little bit of trouble. Although apparently the Queens have already closed the distance and with a beautiful control there. That was actually just in the nick of time. 
time, right? If you try and attempt that, if I were to try and attempt that, I would probably end up losing like eight workers there. But just in the nick of time, those queens arrived, the spore crawler finished up, and with impeccable defense there, Snoot takes absolutely no damage whatsoever. He's already created a few additional roaches here. I'm gonna make the assumption that he knows very well that adepts are going to be a common follow-up to this strategy. Also, there is a probe currently in the position here to create that third base, but early game, really no damage has been dealt here by mana just yet. He is warping in a lot of adepts though, and of course this is one of those things that Zerk does need to be aware of. If you have a quick look right now at the vision of Snoot, he has no clue about this third base just yet, and that's actually a big deal. You need to know when this one goes up. Now currently there is actually a Zerkling making its way across. The probe is desperately trying to get the Nexus up. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it there, but apparently there is now also a uh, Stalker here ready to go, and indeed Mana will be able to keep that alive for a little while longer. Now Snoot, not quite aware here of all of the adepts that are moving across the map, although apparently he does manage to intercept them here very, very nicely. He may, he may still end up taking a little bit of damage. 16 Zerklings currently in production. Of course, that's going to be quite painful. The Adepts immediately going for the surround there on that Queen. And on top of that, we do see the Oracle trying to do as much damage as he possibly can. But still, not a really a whole lot of damage being done here. Protoss is being held back very, very nicely. Adepts, however, did make their way into that third base's mineral line. And it's going to be able to start dealing some damage here. A couple of workers already falling. And for the time being, actually, apparently the rest of the Roaches is being sent into the natural here. And somehow it's away, even though mana seem to be completely overrun there by all of the Zerg pieces. With some very good control on his end and some very, very solid target firing. He somehow still manages to clean up 12 workers there. Very, very nicely done. That is a very substantial amount because all of a sudden as you can see right there in the worker count Protoss is now going to be ahead. Now, of course, the third base is going to be under some pressure here as well. A lot of the adepts did end up falling, but I think there's still going to be enough here to defend against the onslaught of the Zerklings. However, a lot of Zerklings are committing here. That pylon does get taken care of here as well. I'm not seeing a mothership core out on the map. I'm not even sure. Now, he's actually got none of them at this point in time, but he's going to be able to start zapping away at a couple of the overlords as well as potentially deal some damage with the Void Ray that is now out. And of course, this will also put him in a very nice defensive position against any kind of potential roach aggression that the Zerg player may follow this up with. And as you can see, Snoot has decided that he's just simply going to continue making drones, knowing very well that it's going to be difficult to break the protos. But at this point, Mana is looking in a very healthy position. He's got himself that third base saturated. He's going to be able to start producing uh, the Dark Shrine now as well as double immortals here at the front, or at the very least double robotics facilities. So that's very good because he will be able to produce a very powerful army. Army. Now, Mana's still sniping away at these overlords, and this is actually pretty tricky, because of course any kind of war prisms that may be moving across the map shortly will not be scouted by the Zerg until it's already on the other end of the map. Now, Mana apparently feeling brave enough to move across the map with a few of these adepts as well. Of course, they are capable of shading out of there, and he's already activating that as well, knowing very well that his opponent will be on its way to try and deal with all of these adepts, and at the last second, the adepts do manage to get out of there, but not without doing a very nice amount of damage here. Very impressed actually here so far by Mana's aggression. While he managed to do, um, you know, a suitable amount of damage, he's also building a lot of economy here. And he's going to be able to start producing these Dark Templar here very shortly. And with that, of course, Archons as well. Snoot actually needs to be careful here. There's going to be a lot of Protoss units. Once again, that Shade Forward to try and get some more vision. I highly doubt that he wants to commit, but who am I? Maybe he is going to. He's going to at the very least threaten it for just a split second. But look at the amount of Protoss units here. War Prism joining in as well. That fourth base does not stand a chance. And all of a sudden, Mana is looking extremely solid. Following it up here with a robotics bay as well, but of course, Snoot has got a solid economy here, as, here himself as well left over. The Hydralisk recently did increase, uh, or did get an additional 10 HP buff. The Adepts here in the main base will get intercepted, but what that does mean is that these Hydras will become a lot more scary than they used to be in the past. And I'm afraid that Mana is gonna need some sort of splash damage if he, w if he wants to properly deal with all of these Zerg units. I mean... Roach Hydra Ravagers with Zerklings and then very shortly, once the Centrifugal Hooks research is done as well, Banelings is going to be a tricky composition to fight here as a Zerg player. On top of that, this War Prism will get intercepted and indeed four units in it will also get killed. So I'm afraid here that Mana is going to need some sort of splash damage, be it Disruptors, be it Colossi, be it something along the lines of, you know, anything really uh, that, you know, is going to potentially... Yeah, there we go. We do indeed see that follow-up now as well with the Disruptor. Regardless though, this is going to be a difficult army to 
to fight because Snoot is building up a very staggeringly big force here already. Sitting back, doing what he does best. He's trying his best, or he's trying uh, his very hardest to get as much damage done as he possibly can. He will be able to figure out that a new fourth base has been taken, but at the same time, the Hive is already just about to finish up and the Spire is also now started. That means that Snoot is looking to potentially go up to a greater Spire here as well and potentially go for some Brute Lords. And if we have a look at right now, the Protoss army, there's not a whole lot of anti-air here other than a few of these sentries as well as a single Void Ray, but that is not going to be a whole lot. However, hold that thought because the Disruptors are getting in position and they may very well be looking to try and go for some damage. Beautiful control there. A lot of units from the Zerg player do end up falling and apparently Snoot is not feeling this fight just yet. He's trying his very best to uh, go back on his side of the map right now or at the very least make sure that he's not taking the engagement just yet. A couple of Dark Templar have moved in position. Apparently they're they're just sneaking out right now. They're just waiting. They're waiting for additional orders. They don't want to fight just yet. Apparently, they're being hold positioned for the time being. A few adepts here in position as well to try and potentially go for some run buys. Regardless, though, Protoss apparently playing very safe here as well as the Zerg. Neither really taking any additional risks here. And apparently, the Dark Templar, the Stealth Assassins, still hanging back in the... In <laughs> in the fight here. They don't really quite want to take an engagement. At the same time, though, a lot of damage here being done by the Zerklings, although once more, it is very well dealt with here by the Protoss player in yellow. Eventually, though, the Dark Templar have made their way into the main base of the Zerg. Great Aspire is also being morphed in, but of course, Protoss will be able to get some very nice vision of this, and at the same time, Protoss is also moving across the map, while the Zerg player is preoccupied with just a handful of these DTs in the main base, and it does indeed mean that this newly acquired fourth here for Snoot will be taken care of as well. At the same time, Zealots have made their way to the other fourth base, or I guess this would automatically become the fifth then, and a lot of damage is being done here once again by Liquid Mana. He's cleaned up a lot of the aggression, but is he not pushing a little too far forward? Beautiful Disruptor hits though, cleaning up so much of that aggression. There are a lot of Vipers now in the air as well, so of course Zerg will be able to yank away a lot of these high damage Protoss units, and somehow this army doesn't look that menacing. However, a lot of these Zerg units are preoccupied to deal with the main army of the Protoss and that does mean that the Zealots will be able to ravage that third base absolutely brilliantly. Beautiful engagement here, but still, a ton of additional production being added on here. A lot of Hydralisk did just end up finishing, but 22 workers ended up falling here for the Zerg player in red. Somehow, some way though, Snoot is still dealing with this army and I can't help and, but imagine how much different this fight would have looked if Protoss would have cleaned up a lot more of this creep. I mean, Zerk is just able to surround this so much easier and a lot of the vision will give the Zerk a very nice opinion here about um, if he can take the engagement or if he should be holding back. Even though Mana just did a substantial amount of damage, right, and he's got that fourth base finished up, he's not really dealing with the creep, and Zerk can just maneuver around absolutely brilliantly. He's still behind here in the army supply counts as well as in the um, unit count here in general as well. I mean, uh, 99 army supply here versus 57. Of course, Disruptors are still ready to go. Great Aspire did just end up finishing here as well, but it looks like Snoot, for the time being, will just be focusing on Hydralisk. And even though Mana did a substantial amount of damage throughout this game. I'm guessing here the engagements that he took with all of the army that he had was just not that impressive. I mean, if you had a quick look at those engagements, I mean, he ended up doing a lot of economic damage, but he ended up sacrificing a ton of his army as well. Once again, though, these disruptor hits are absolute gold. So much damage being done. A lot of these Zerg forces getting cleaned up there. Disruptors, however, picked up and yanked backwards by the Vipers. Very nice control there as well by Snoot, but still, this is a scary fight here for the Zerg player in red and apparently now it's even worth to start picking up some of these sentries as well. Very, very nice control here, all things considered, by Snoot, making the best of the army that he has and still taking wonderful engagements, even though he lost so much army supply to those disruptor hits. If we have a quick look at the work account, though, there are 54 Harfesters remaining here for mana versus only 28 of the Protoss. I would really like to see just a single observer here to start cleaning up all of this creep, because 
there we go. It actually, there is actually a single observer out right now. I was going to say, like, there's just simply so much vision here for the Zerg player that it's going to be difficult to take a proper engagement. Uh, but still, the longer this game goes on, the bigger the army supply advantage will become here as well for mana. Right now, he's still slightly behind in that, but he is pulling ahead in the supply counts here in general. Building up a larger and larger force, but Zerg still has got a menacing army, though. I don't really know how Snoot does this. I mean, he's picked up a lot of army units, I guess, from his opponent. And these stalkers actually intercepted. That is not what you want to have happen right now. If the army supplies are as little as they are right now, the stalkers will be able to blink away. But of course, Zerg can now take the engagement. The stalkers are not in the engagement or in the position right now to start fighting here for the Protoss units. And all of a sudden, Zerg is looking in an extremely solid position. Position. A very spread out engagement there with the concave in favor of the Zerg player in red. And while the Immortals and the Arkles are desperately trying to engage this fight as well, for the most part, they were just simply holding back once again. These Yanks of the Vipers doing so much damage, picking up the last of the Protoss units. And I think even though so many workers were killed in this match, 47 in total, a little bit too much army supply was wasted in the process. And Zerg is looking powerful a lot of these high tier units actually and these vipers doing so much work but the high tier units just simply got picked up and absolutely brilliantly snoot ends up picking up the victory even though mana did so much damage throughout the remainder of this game it just simply wasn't enough and i guess he sacrificed a little bit too much in these big army engagements i hope you enjoyed watching this match if you did make sure you hit that like button down below and if you want to see more make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as i upload more and while you're at it you can also follow me on twitter instagram and facebook links are in the description and by the way apparently snoot at the final engagement had over a thousand actions per minute isn't that incredible like that that's just insane absolutely wild anyway i want to thank you for watching have an amazing day do not forget to smile all right and i will see you in the next one